everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, you can see what's on the easel. Finally, after so many requests from you guys, I'm doing the Blue Heron. It's gone now, it found a new home. Uh, I kind of miss it to be honest, so this one maybe will take its place unless it finds a new owner, but for so long you guys saw that Blue Heron hanging on the wall behind the easel in my videos and you've been asking me to paint this one, so I did it in a new version. I added some pretty little water lilies here and kind of kept it in the softer, some softer tones so feel free to add more color to yours if you want or uh, keep it in black and white so you'll see how we begin this um, painting it's gonna be in grayscale this is a longer tutorial than what I'm normally used to doing and what you're normally used to seeing so I hope you guys are excited to learn how to paint this I'm very excited to teach you and show you all the steps so that you can do this all of you guys watching right now no matter what level skill level you're at you can all uh, achieve this and just follow along at your own pace and look for a full list below this video in the description of all the colors and brushes that I'm using today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started guys. Okay guys, let's just jump right in and get started on this painting. We're working on a 16 by 20 primed canvas with acrylic white gesso, one to two coats, let it dry. I'm gonna take my number 50 filbert brush, some black and some titanium white, and I'm just gonna start covering up the background. I'm gonna cover up 99% of the canvas, leaving only the top left corner uh, white, because that of course is where our sun rays are gonna be coming in from. I want to just continue along here picking up a little bit more white sometimes especially where I know I'm going to have those sun rays I'm going to make it a little bit softer and just start to get a feel of the direction that those sun rays are going to be going in and kind of start to get into that frame of mind that mood of this setting and this landscape that we're building up I'm just going to scumble along just to get the bottom of that canvas that's kind of tucked into my easel there and a little bit harder to get to and keep in mind that you can use any black or white paint that you want. It doesn't have to be the same uh, that I'm using. There are different shades and tones of black and white. All will work really nicely in this painting. And you can also use, of course, any brush that you want just for creating this background. So now picking up just white, I haven't washed my brush out, there's still a hint of grey in there. And without drying the painting off first, though if your painting is dry already, no worries, you can still do this. I'm just, it's not necessary to make sure that it's dry first, but it'll work either way, wet or dry. I'm going to start building out the first layers of my sun rays. So I'm going to start in the corner and pull and flick in all directions. Now, if you want to make sure that your sun rays are as straight as possible and don't have a curve to them, then switch over from this filbert, filbert brush because it has a round end. And if you're not an experienced painter, then you might have a little bit of a harder time trying to control that and um, make them straight. So you want to use you'll want to use a flat brush. Those have the nice straight ends to them, and that'll be a little bit easier for those beginners out there uh, that want to create those nice straight sun rays. I'm going to just push to tap in the end of my brush now and start pulling and sliding my brush sideways back and forth leaving little areas so almost a full uh, flat oval or pancake type of shape and these are just going to be some very loose impressionistic water lilies that are sitting flat on the water so from our view we're not gonna, it's not an aerial view so we're not seeing round we're just seeing sort of squashy <laughs> oval flat looking um, shapes there okay so that's why they're that shape and I'm not making them all the same tone so I'm picking up a little bit of white each time I do this sometimes a little bit of black that way we're just gonna naturally get those highlights and shadows um, forming on their own and this is gonna make your painting a lot more realistic 
So now I'm switching over to my liner brush. This is a Princeton liner brush. Doesn't matter what liner brush you have. I just know that you guys are always curious about what brands of brushes I'm using. So when I know which ones I'm using, not all of them have um, the brand or the company or the make on them. Um, but when they do, I'll try to remember to let you guys know Princeton is a good one. I have a few different brushes from Princeton, my oval mop and a few other mops. What I'm doing now is just really loosely pulling and flicking long lines in all different directions. So sort of crisscrossing, you don't have to have them straight up and down. This is kind of a wild, um, pond, lily pond area so and there could be a little bit of a breeze blowing so just make it really natural you know all grass and reeds don't all shoot straight up in the air they're kind of leaning and if you have a little bit of a curve or a flow to them that's going to add even more mood and feeling and character to your painting so I'm going to use water as well to help that paint flow out of my brush liner brushes are a little bit tricky to use if you don't have an equal amount of water and paint on them depending on what you're using them for if you're wanting to kind of travel around with your paint making branches and long blades of grass like this then yes you definitely want to have some water in there but if you're just working on tiny little things um, like little dots then you don't need the water you just need the paint and using the tip of your brush only so I'm making these all different lengths and sometimes I'm going to pick up a little bit of black and pull that along the sides or one side only just for a bit of shadow and contrast. So I'm going to do a few more of these here with my liner brush and then I'm actually going to switch over to a really fun brush and it's called a cat's tongue brush. It's really versatile. It's a, one of my must-have brushes. If I didn't mention that in my other video, I'll leave a link below if you guys haven't seen that, especially if you're beginners. I've got a few. There it is. It's a really fun brush. So it's like a filbert, but it comes to a pointy end like a liner brush. So you can use it in so many different ways. But I have a couple of videos out on how to use acrylic, my brushes, paints that I use, tips and tricks. So I'll be sure to link those below. Those could be very, very helpful for you. Even if you're experienced painters, there may be something in there that you can pick up for me that you haven't thought about or known about before. So I'm just gonna use this now to create a little bit uh, thicker looking blades of grass and reeds. And I'm also going to add some more details, little details here and there, still keeping it loose and impressionistic for those lily pads. And then I'm gonna add a few little uh, water lily flowers. I'm going to come and overlap here with thicker pieces of grass that lean and really crisscross over. I want to create layers and make it look a little bit more dense and 3D. So that's how you do that. You want to just come in with thicker amounts of paint to layer over and build up some foliage here. And I'm going to switch over to um, just straight white but I'm gonna go over from the top corner, the left, and I'm gonna start my next layer of my sun rays. So as the paint has time to sit and dry, uh, it's easier to come over and add those brighter highlights that you want. So I'm gonna always start in the corner there, making that the brightest area, my light source, and just go over. I'm not gonna cop like follow over or copy the lines that I've already got there. I'm gonna add um, a few extra ones in there so you can go over those ones but feel free to um, add a few other ones in between if you want as long as you've got a little bit of shadow in between those uh, it's going to look really pretty and really striking Now you'll notice how sometimes when I'm working on my blades of grass, I start at the top of them and sometimes I start at the bottom. This kind of just gives you a little bit more freedom. You can paint them any way that you want and uh, they're going to look a lot more natural like that. And I'm going to just do a few more little blades of grass here, kind of softer ones that are going to be go in, in behind, in between and behind the heron that we're going to add a little bit later on. 
and I'm gonna add a little bit more white and maybe a few more water lilies in here, some highlights. Now later on, what this grayscale does, especially these whiter areas, these brighter areas, uh, are gonna are really important for when we're coming over with our colors later because um, they're gonna create all those pretty pastel tones and the colors are really gonna pop on that and then the gray areas are gonna be natural mid-tones and we don't have to worry about um, trying to color mix or shade because we've already done it here by building up this painting in black and white and it's a lot easier especially if you're a new painter and you're just beginning to approach a painting in two colors only at first uh, especially when you're working on multiple things in a painting um, so when you just break it down into two colors first and then you come in later on and add your colors it's so much easier now you can see how I'm using this little brush here, this cat tongue brush uh, for creating my loose impressionistic water lilies. These are really fun. I want some of my flowers to be just budding still and getting ready to open up and then other ones that are opened up so you have a combination and a feeling of everything going on here. So I'm going to add a few really pretty colors to this painting later and um, some of them are going to be neons guys know by now after watching my videos or following my channel um, I think I've been on YouTube for about two years now uh, it feels like it's only been one but I guess it's been two already and I love uh, my neon uh, luminous paints I think they're a really nice addition to um, regular um, tones of paints so I don't just use only neons but I really like to incorporate them with all my other colors so if you are watching this now and you're like well I don't have any neon paints I guess I can't do this painting no that's definitely not true you can paint this with any pretty colors that you have you don't have to have neon paints that's just my personal preference but any pink orange yellow purple red blue anything that you have is going to look just beautiful so don't be intimidated or think that you can't paint something that I'm working on if you don't have the same brushes or paints or even canvas so I'm going to continue to just to build up these details here adding a few more uh, buds and you, taking advantage of this cat's tongue brush the pointy end on it for where I need to get those tighter pointier little um, flower petals and then pushing a little bit harder where I want to create that round fuller shape now I also want to mention the darker areas there at the base of the flowers are the green leaves and stems and shadows so I just use not straight black but like a dark a dark dark gray and now I'm coming in with the legs our long skinny legs for our blue heron and they're going to be slightly on a slant they're going to come a, 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 just a little bit wider at the top there and then almost start to turn in the opposite direction at the bottom they have a little bit of a bend in them and then i'm going to make them stand out a little bit more by adding a bit of black here for a shadow now i where i live i see blue herons all the time and i never uh, uh get sick of it i think it's so special every time i see one and if i wherever i'm walking by the water there there's either one or two there and they're just beautiful um, and to see them in flight and even land in trees and they're just I think they're one of my favorite types of birds that and peacocks and owls so here I'm starting the shape of the body and just kind of curving down here I'm going to make sort of like a V shape here with white I'm um, approaching this heron first in white right now still using my cat's tongue brush it works well for the shapes and the feathers and pretty much everything that I um, need to um, paint out for the shape of this bird and I'm gonna it kind of looks like a long skinny oval here um, right at the top of the legs if I was to well I will be coming up over pretty soon and then it will be like a long oval so I just want you to kind of break it down into shapes if you're intimidated and you're not really sure how to approach this I don't offer traceables I don't think anything's wrong with traceables I just don't offer something that I don't use myself I want to teach you guys and it's how I've been teaching my students for the past uh, almost 20 years how to teach and um, inspire you guys to not need traceables I think we all have it within us to approach something freehand if you can paint with a brush you can also um, sketch out with a brush what the image is that you're painting 
but if you want a traceable there's nothing wrong with that and there's also a lot of reference photos out there for herons so this is just my style and my approach to painting and um, the way I teach and instruct and it's worked very very well and instilled a lot of confidence in my students over the years so I'm gonna make a long and really pointy beak that gets a little bit wider of course as it gets uh, closer to the face and then we're just gonna pull in it's almost like an S shape here from the head now the head isn't really really round it's kind of a flat round just a little bit of an arc and then the heron's neck goes in and then out and then curves back down towards the legs so again having that gray underpainting is really helpful because we have those natural shadows in there we've got that mid-tone we will be adding some extra dark shadows for contrast and I'll be using a bit of black for that but I'm never going to be using just straight black so it's always going to be like a almost black but the darkest shade of gray that I can make I want to keep an overall softness to this painting and I'm just going to use the tip of my brush here cat's tongue brush to create these long hairs or feathers that kind of uh, pop out and fl flick up towards the right side they start to gradually flick out but they're very soft and uh, get smaller and smaller so they're gonna be longer towards the legs as they're pointing down to the legs and then start to get smaller and smaller and smaller towards the neck so I'm gonna bring that back in finish off that left side of the head bring it back and it's gonna be really skinny well a lot skinnier there right below where imagine where the eye is gonna be right below there and that will be the skinniest part of uh, the neck on the heron and I'm gonna play around with the beak just a little bit I was being a bit finicky with the shape it was bothering me for some reason when I was working on this I normally don't take this long or this much time on something but I felt like and I don't know if it was the angle that I was painting on or how I had my camera set up or how I was viewing it but I felt like I just couldn't get the right uh, depth or the end to the beak so don't think you have to spend as much time as I did on it I think I was just being a bit fussy yesterday so I'm gonna make sure that the entire outside of the heron is glowing in a nice bright white so we get this really magical soft beautiful glow from those sun rays and we're gonna keep the shadows inside now herons have a little it's you can hardly see it unless you really look closely but they have a little bit of hair on the top of their head that goes off off the side so just like one or two little hairs and you'll see that progress here in a few minutes I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow to the top part of the beak and add another little line in here for the bottom of the beak and then a black line right there they have a darker a darker pattern now when I say black I am adding black but it's mixing in with my wet white paint underneath creating just a really dark gray color so I'm just gonna work on the pattern here a little bit more and I'm gonna start building up some darker shadows uh, outline right here give it some definition where this wing is and then I'll come in with some subtle shapes here I'm not gonna to fuss too much about um, getting too too much detail in every single feather I just want the suggestion that we've got this beautiful blue heron standing here and really kind of invoke a feeling of the glow from the sun rays the beautiful loose water lilies down there and the setting in the tall reeds in the grass and it's going to be about soft colors more pastel softer today even though I'm using neon paints I'm blending them or mixing them with a bit of titanium white and that's going to give us that beautiful pop of color but it's going to be soft at the same time
So I'm going to outline a few little areas here, making these feathers uh, not, not straight up and down. They're going to be slightly on a bit of an angle. Um, you can paint yours however you want, or you can follow along here. Again, I'm using my cat's tongue brush. Now, I didn't mention that if you don't have this brush, um, I only acquired one of these and actually found out about these uh, about a year ago. I've been painting um, the over well over 20 years um, just with filbert brushes, round brushes, and flat brushes. So you can do this painting and create these feathers with a filbert brush, a flat brush, or a round brush. You could even use, um, in fact I didn't even think of that, I should have grabbed one of my um, little fan brushes and demonstrated how you can get a really nice feather effect using a fan brush. So keep that in mind and if you guys want to practice ahead of time I recommend that too um, to get a good feel for what feather type effect, what brush strokes you can uh, achieve with different brushes. You can do that just like on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard, anything you have lying around just to practice on. So just do a whole bunch of feathers different ways and uh, get a good feel for it if you want to have some practice and feel a little bit more confident before um, approaching this painting. Okay, so I hope you guys are doing well and keeping up and following along. Um, make sure that you feel free to follow this at your own pace. Stop. You can slow it down. You stop the video. Watch it again and again. Um, be sure to ask questions if you're not sure if there's something you're stuck on. Now all I'm doing here is coming in with my next layer of these hairs or these feathers. Just using this uh, cat's tongue brush again. Just the tip of it. And I'm kind of creating a flow. I'm going along with that. I'm following that shape and that curve of the bird's neck and chest. Uh, and then making them smaller and smaller as they get up towards more of the neck. I'm going to add, uh, make sure this is a nice bright um, shape of white right there. And then come in with a fresh coat of white for the legs here. I want to make sure I have a little reflection, uh, a few little ripples in the water so that it have a, have a little bit of a mirrored effect and sh and reflection of those legs in the water. And you can do this with some of the grass as well if you want, um, but because the, the heron is standing right in the water here, it's really important to not skip that. I think that it adds a lot to the painting. I don't know why, just uh, subtle little things like that can make a big impact in a painting. I'm going to come over the top and redo my white here. I'm going to redo my highlights and really make this stand out, concentrate a little bit more on the shape of the beak around the eye where the eye is going to be. I haven't added the eye yet. And overall just really work on getting the right shape of everything, the right amount of feathers. And once I achieve the look that I want, I'm going to make sure the painting is all dried off. And then I'm going to come in with my colors and that's going to be the most enjoyable part of the painting for me. I really, really love adding color. 
So I'm just going to add a bit, a bit more black or dark grey, narrowing this beak up a little bit. I think out of this whole painting, the beak was the most challenging for me. I'm not really sure why it shouldn't be that hard, but like I said, it was just giving me a little bit of uh, grief when I was painting this. So you definitely don't need to take as long as I did with your beak. Just make like a make it look like a carrot, a really skinny carrot that just gets slightly wider towards the face.
Okay, so after adding just a few more hints of sun rays, soft sun rays in here, um, making sure that I'm careful not to touch or brush over the wet, thick white paint that I have on my hair end. I'm going to dry this off after, which I left out of the video. I don't think you guys need to see me taking my hair dryer and drying this off for 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to get some lemon, cadmium lemon cool yellow. Any cool yellow that you have will work really well. If you want to keep your um, yellow more on the warm side, that is just fine as well. You can use any tones of yellows that you want, but if you want to follow along with me and want to achieve the same hues, that's what I'm using. I'm using a bright, cool yellow, and in fact, I would have used a neon yellow cool, but I've been out of that for quite a while, and I haven't been able to get any more of my um, neon paints that I'm out of. They're always out of stock, so I'm going to blame it on you guys. You're ordering all of the paints that I want to get. Um, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm happy that you guys are enjoying those neon paints and that they're they're selling out. So it just means that you guys are inspired and you're happy using neon paints just like I am. So I'm going to, like I said, just finish up some of the sun rays here. I want to make some of them go right off the canvas. And then I'm going to come in with my yellow. Now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and white and I'll begin the grass like that. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to some areas of the sun rays and just wherever I want to have that touch of yellow and I'm going to keep in mind that I'm I want to keep in mind that I'm adding another color over part of the yellow so wherever I want to add yellow I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that I have an area where I can come in with some turquoise or some phthalo green or phthalo blue and filter that over to create another color so right in here I'm going to start with my yellow be nice and bright where some of those sun rays are hitting and falling on it and then uh, some areas on the lily pads a few areas on parts of the flowers I'm even gonna add a little bit uh, to my white I'm gonna tint my white with just a touch of that yellow for some parts of the bright highlights on the bird Okay, so I've got a good start here with my light yellow and I'm going to go in with a clean brush with my beautiful phthalo green or viridian green and it's just a blue green so if you don't have the shade you can actually take phthalo blue I believe with cool yellow like I have here and you can get sort of the same color if you mix those two together so I'm going to brush over filter over wherever I want to have this beautiful hue of green part of the water part of the lily pads uh, part of the background overlap part of the yellow like I mentioned earlier so we get a few different tones of green and yellows in there I'm going to be a bit more generous with my green on the top right corner. I'm going to add quite a bit down here. I want, this is a lot darker on this side, so I want to make sure that we have this deep 
green. I'm going to be coming in with a little bit of phthalo blue over top as well. And I'm going to soften this. I want it to gradually get lighter and lighter towards that sun. So I'm going to switch over to another brush eventually and kind of get that blended in a bit better. Now, if you don't have phthalo blue, you can also use um, cobalt, ultramarine. You can use cerulean blue. Um, I don't. I really don't think any color will look bad with this painting. I think you could choose any colors you want as long as you have this uh, source of light and the shadows and mid-tones going on. You can really take this in any uh, color palette that you wanted. And I'm curious to see, I, I'd love to see your versions of this on the Facebook group. I'll leave a link below if you haven't joined already. It's uh, a wonderful supportive group um, specifically for all my tutorials where you guys, it's a platform for you guys to show and share and um, uh, chat with others about your versions and um, share your beautiful versions from my tutorials. And I'm so blown away by all of them. You guys are so talented. I look forward to seeing them all the time. And I try my best to keep up. Um, there's so much being posted on there all the time. And I have lots of um, paintings that I'm working on all the time and and things going on social media so I if I'm if I'm not commenting right away I am seeing it and I'm very very impressed and happy to see all of your paintings so keep up the good work you guys now you can see I've got another filbert brush this one's a number 30 I was using a number 50 at the very beginning and I've got my phthalo blue so I'm going to just start cutting in in between some of those blades of grass I'm going to be creating more shadow um, over top of the darker gray areas giving this a beautiful blue-green hue to these areas. And this blue is more of a green blue, right? It's a phthalo blue. So what I'm, I'm not going to be using this blue for the heron. I want the heron to specifically be a uh, light blue violet. Now, light blue violet is a combination of titanium white and either cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. Either will work. Um, but if you're curious to know what brand I'm using today, it's um, by Golden Acrylics, and it's a really beautiful one. It gives it a sort of a velvety, um, yeah, like a velvet suede, gorgeous matte finish, and I, I love that, almost like a powdery finish. And I feel like that adds to the mood of this painting. It's really, really soft, and that's what I'm going to be using um, in combination uh, with little subtle hints of pink mixed in with my phthalo blue at times for some other areas. Um, not just phthalo blue though, but I found that if you mix phthalo blue with neon pink or even the neon rose, again from uh, Holbein, um, or you can use quinacridone violet or magenta with phthalo blue and a bit of white, you can get really close to creating that light blue violet shade. I'm going to work on my sun rays a little bit more with a clean brush, of course. I'm going to do a fresh coat, a little bit of uh, blue, green, and white. So it kind of gradually flows in with those other colors. And then I'll make sure that it's bright, bright white on the very top left corner. I want to emphasize the soft and subtle sun rays down here at the base of the water coming in from behind the heron. Now they're not going to be white. I'm just adding a bit of blue and green, trying to line it up, just eyeballing it here. And I think that's a really pretty touch and adds a lot to this painting. I'm then going to just kind of scumble off that green where I actually accidentally went over the feathers and the hairs with, and then maybe put a few little um, strands of grass or some um, subtle looking reeds to kind of just back in the distance. I don't want them to, to overpower uh, those beautiful soft sun rays that we've got going on.
Okay, so I've got my little round brush and I've got my neon pink ready. I'm gonna take, I've also got my light blue violet there. You can see that gorgeous color. I'm gonna take a bit of white with my neon pink and I'm gonna start coloring these flowers in. Very patchy looking. I don't want them all to be one color. So I wanna have some areas a little bit more pink. Some areas have a little bit of yellow. Some of them have a bit more white. Um, the idea is to make them multi-tonal and have different uh, colors. And wherever I want to have a shadow, what I'm going to be using is my light blue violet. It kind of just um, is a little um, twist on Monet water lilies. I love when he used um, blues and purples for shadows. I think that's just really gorgeous and dreamy. So I'm adding, that's why I chose to use the blue, but you could use any colors that you want for your shadows if you want to use um, maybe like a, a purple or black or just keep it gray you can and then I'm just gonna do little dabs and kind of um, make them look a little bit softer around the edges for a little bit of whimsy back here and maybe the suggestion of some pretty little water lilies that go back so again the colors I'm using today for my water lilies are lemon cool lemon yellow neon pink, light blue violet or light ultramarine blue, and a bit of white. Now with all those colors you can make so many different other colors and they're all going to work really well together and create uh, a beautiful harmony of pastels. But see how elegant that blue looks with the pink and the yellow and the turquoise going on that we that we made with phthalo green and white. I'm now going to start adding the color to my heron. So again, just a little bit of that uh, powdery looking blue, the light blue violet, light blue violet or light ultramarine blue, the same thing. So wherever I have my darkest colors, so here I'm just taking a bit of my uh, neon luminous rose, experimenting. Just want to show you guys a different color that you can make. More of a lilac -y blue. Over top of the darkest areas of my heron is where I'm applying my blue. Or my color, I guess you could say. And if you want to really make your painting pop for your brightest highlights where I've got the white I'm going to tint it with just a little bit of uh, yellow pink and white to make a soft peachy color Now because I'm loving this blue so much, I want to add more in the water, so I'm going to add some over the lily pads. Again, just keeping those long, loose oval shapes. I'm going to continue along here using my blues, adding some to the base of the reeds there, just kind of making all the colors work well together in between some of the little feathers and hairs here for a little bit more contrast. So I might come in here again uh, with my white over top later, but I want to add that hint of blue, blue in there.
So as the painting dries, I notice that I need to come back and add a few more um, subtle hints of sun rays in here, which is really normal. It happens with acrylic. It always looks brighter and lighter when it's still wet. So don't worry, it's completely normal to have to go back a few times, quite a few times sometimes, if you're working on a darker um, canvas, especially if you've got it primed dark gray like we have today. Um, you'll need to do your highlights a few times. So just take your time, relax, and have a lot of patience and just really try to enjoy the process. And stop at any time if you feel like you're getting tired and a little bit. If you're not enjoying yourself, it probably means that you need to stop and just take a break. Now I'm taking my beautiful luminous rose here and I'm just dusting over the top right corner. A few areas in the water. These are just beautiful accents, a touch here and there of some of your favorite colors can really um, put your stamp on a painting and makes make your artwork your own. This just happens to be one of my favorite colors. And I think it looks really pretty right up against part of that blue. Uh, it's also really complementary with green. So like I said, all these colors, you can't go wrong. You can get away with using a lot of colors in a painting. Don't ever think that uh, it's going to look tacky or it's going to be a mess if you use um, every color. You can definitely use every color in one painting. It's just learning um, how to apply it and um, having that um, grayscale underpainting can really be effective as well.
So I'm just going to add um, more little details here and there, bringing, helping to bring this painting all together. A little bit more shadow, outlines, highlights, um, a few more flowers you can see I added there in the distance. Just little dots and dabs. I'm not ever spending too much time on one thing and really wanting to create uh, a mood. So I, when I'm, when I feel satisfied with the color harmony and the overall mood of a painting, I know I'm done. I don't look at one thing in particular. Um, it's the painting as a whole that I see. So this painting is all done and I want to thank you all for requesting this on Patreon, especially you Peggy, and I'll see you all soon in another video. Don't forget to subscribe and like for more.